you guys, 2,000 subscribers. I poke myself in my eye. That's how excited I am. <laughs> This is episode 51 uh, of Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. I'm Grace. I am the host of this little podcast. And you can find me on Instagram as Vanna Willemiel. You can also find my yarn dyeing business as Babbles Yarns on Instagram and also on Etsy. And all the details can be found below in the doobly doo. Now, this episode is a pretty dang special one because there's going to be a huge giveaway huge giveaway and I want to say just thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed who has given little likes who's commented previously um it means the absolute world to me I it's it's fabulous to be on this end of receiving so many kind of um people who want to see what you're talking about it's really lovely, like so lovely. <laughs> so what I thought I'd do for this special episode is to go through, I don't know, I just had this idea, go through all the garments that I've knit so far in my lifetime, which is, I think a little bit, oh, I, a little bit over a year now. So I've decided just through like, the episode to just sprinkle in the, 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 all the garments that I've ever knit knit now not crochet let's not go into the past and delve into my terrible crochet mistakes that's for another video that's coming up the return of the never-ending sleeves is happening make sure you subscribe so you can see myself falling all over myself all over again with how ridiculously hilarious it is anyway this video this is the first ever garment i knit for myself this is the flax jumper it's knit in a DK weight um, yarn Bellissimo yarn it's a 50% cotton 50% merino and this is a Cleck Heaton superfine merino superfine merino 100% merino so this was the first one I ever did and I decided hey you know what would be a great idea I'm going to completely modify it I'm going to change because it's actually for a worsted weight I'm going to change it for a DK weight I'm going to add in cables into the raglan increases I'm going to inc I'm going to do some waist shaping in it there's no waist shaping in the flex <sighs> and I did it and it's wonderful and I just threw myself into it and I am obsessed with this jumper. I wear it when I'm feeling super cozy and comfy. It it has pilled a little bit. It I have gleaned it once or twice, but it's actually holding up really, really well. Um, this is about 18 months old now, I would say. I was knitting it when I was traveling down the east coast of Australia from, um, I think I cast it on in Brisbane maybe? Yeah, because I bought the I bought the yarn in Perth and I had it with me, but I didn't cast it on until I'd actually travelled over. So I had swatched and done a little bits and bobs. So this is my first ever garment. I remember um, knitting it a lot in Sydney, and I think I finished it in Sydney. No, I finished it in. No, did I cast it on in Melbourne and then I knitted in Sydney when I was looking for jobs and stuff. That was so good. Oh. <gasps> memories so let's get on to the giveaway I've got a lot of stuff here you guys so I decided to go through my stash and see what type of nice package I could put through for you so with this giveaway on my YouTube video it's a video giveaway it's not going to be my own yarn it's going to be yarn from my stash yarn from other people and on Instagram I'm going to do my own giveaway on my Vanna Willa Meal site so keep an eye out for that if you haven't subscribed to that keep an eye out now so the first few things I'm going to show you I got them a long time ago 
and they're so beautiful but I don't I just don't think I'm going to I, I don't have a project in mind so I didn't want them to just sit there being beautiful so I had to give them away and these are like really really stunning so this is Mimi Lotus Yarns now this one is a hundred percent mink 50 grams this was sent to me by a viewer of the podcast it is so beautiful absolutely gorgeous soft stuff but I'm not going to use it so one of you guys gets to use it so that is number one of the podcast giveaway Number two is this stunning alpaca delight that arrived as part of the John Arbin um, member mill, uh, members mill uh, package. Now I have found out that I'm particularly sensitive to alpaca. Don't ask me why. So this is 70% alpaca, 30% Falklands Merino, and it is 100 grams and it's alpaca delight in the white and I wish I wish I could wear alpaca I wish I could but it's oh it's so beautiful so it's this very delicate twist on it it's beautiful so these two and then I am going to give away something super special that I kind of really didn't want to give away, but I have to give it away because I love you guys so much. <laughs> so this is the Dalton Border Leicester in the worsted spun Aran weight. And it's this beautiful Dalton blue color. Oh my gosh. I would love to hang on to this, but I have another, I have another one of these and I am going to make an amazing hat out of it and give a full review on the podcast when I knit it. I haven't knit it yet. So this is Dalton Border Leicester. Look at that twist on it. Wouldn't cables be amazing in that? Oh, can't you see? Oh, it's so beautiful. So these three. And... Because I'm sticking to like obviously a blue and grey theme, I decided that I had to give you something Irish as well. So this is some S twist wool Irish craft yarn and it's colour work. So it's um, mixed mountain Tipperary fleece from my area, from where I'm going to be doing the um, the my retreat from. This is where the sheep comes from and it is sock weight 300 meters per 100 grams so it's more of a sport weight i believe it's a single spun single twist yarn it is so beautiful so there's 120 grams in here so each one of these is 30 grams so you're getting more than more than 100 grams in this oh it's so beautiful and the colours in this are so gorgeous. And you'll get a little bit of Irish um, vegetable matter in there as well, because it's directly from the sheep. He sends it up, he gets it spun himself. It's amazing. And he dyes it himself as well. These are so beautiful, these little sets. So, as well as all the wool, I'm also going to be adding in this stunning bag by Kate from Hawthorne Cottage Craft. <laughs> It's the fat bird bag. Oh, look at these little cutie pooties. So this bag is a beautiful, beautiful um, large bucket bag. It's got snaps on it, so you can do color work in it or you can work two things at a time like socks or sleeves. It's got three snaps all the way across so you can have um, the, color, the yarn coming out the sides and then open it to like ferry about for all of your bits and bobs. And then when you're on the go, you can turn it down. It's got this little loop that goes over the button. These are so well made, it's beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. So it turns down like this, and you've got this really sturdy kind of canvasy strap. It's actually knitted, knit fabric, a knitted cord. Beautiful. So that's in the prize package too. And, 
So I went over to Barbara's the other day and we filmed and I picked up one of these beautiful coasters, a knitting gauge, knitting swatch gauge, and I thought it would go nicely with the green, with the blues, a nice green, nice poppy green. And yeah, so a little knitting gauge coaster from Knitting I Love. I might throw in a few of her tags as well if I can find them. I don't know where I put them. But I also just made these stitch markers. So I've been collecting little charms that are that have something to do with the globe, which is kind of my it's kind of my thing, you know, traveling the world, the earth, you know. And <laughs> so I'll show you this one first. So this is a very simple globe. It's a flat one, but it's so cute. And this is a stitch marker. Um, this one I love, this kind of vintage, vintage globe. Hang on, let me just pop it. These are Trixie to show. So it's a vintage globe. It's so cute and it's really quite heavy. It's lovely. It feels solid. I also made a couple of just really simple ring stitch markers with some beads on it. Some beads. And then this one, now I really would like it to focus on this, but I don't know if it's going to. But I made this out of Fimo. It's a little earth. It's a little square looking, I'm sorry now, but it's made with my own two hands. And this is a progress keeper, with a large progress keeper, so you can use it as a stitch marker too. It's uh, not to scale. <laughs> So I'm going to throw in some of these little stitch markers that I made as well into the big prize parcel. Yay! So what do you have to do to win it? So I was thinking about this and I would like you to comment below. Uh, comment below what you would like to, what you like most about the podcast and what you would like to see more of because, you know, I want to give you what you want, you know? Let me know what you think. If you just love it, you just say, just say love it and you're in. However, I do want you to realize that when you are commenting down below in a YouTube comment, there is no way for me to contact you if you don't see it, if you, if you win in the next episode and if you don't see it, um, if you, if you don't catch up. So make sure you watch the next episode where I'm going to call, I'm going to announce the winners. Okay. So make sure you do that because I don't want you to miss out. It's an amazing prize. So, um, just so, just so you make sure that you don't miss out if you want to subscribe or if you're super, super keen that you like, you might be busy or whatever. Um, if you want to be notified when I put up a new episode, you can actually like press the little bell as well for the next episode and you can turn it off after that if you don't want to if you don't want to be constantly at me because I'm uploading um a few little vlogs as well at the same at, at the moment so um but for the next podcast and you want to find out if you've won subscribe and press the little notify button and then hopefully there's no chance you'll miss it so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the next prize I'm gonna pull the prize for next week yeah at in I'm going to pull the winner next week and uh, keep an eye out. I will leave it open for about two weeks for the person to get in contact with me, either on Ravelry, on Vanna Willemiel, on Instagram on Vanna Willemiel, um, on my email if you want at grace, dot, or grace at babblestravelingyarns.com. Um, yeah, so that's that's one way that you can win these beautiful prizes. There's so many things. There's so many things. <laughs> All these things. It's so nice. And I might throw in a few Irish sweeties too, if you're lucky. I probably will, because it's going to be amazing. So thank you so much, everybody. Now, let's get on to um, the Outlander cow. I'm wearing my comfy, cozy cardigan for this this part. This was a whole bunch of yarn that I bought at a yarn, at a, at, it was just a normal market and a lady was just destashing her mother's old yarn. And it was some yarn that they found that she had bought in Victoria, I believe. And it's just a really simple, um, I think it was just called the year round cardigan. And I just added a seed stitch border and seed stitch button band. 
And this was my second knitted item, so it's quite long. But um, I think I should have knitted a little bit closer, or I know I always want to do this. And I still haven't moved in the end. Classy bird. Now, what are we looking at? We are looking at the Outlander cowl. How exciting! Oh my god! There's some amazing stuff in the um, in the finished objects thread. Have you been watching Outlander? Because I have. I actually haven't been able to catch up on the last two. I started watching it last night, and then the boys came home, so I was like, dang it, can't watch it. Because you have to watch. You can't watch it with boys around, especially boys that might laugh at that laugh at it. So. Uh, for my Outlander cowl, I finished a pair of beautiful Fergus socks by Anna Anna Freyberg. Fergus socks by Anna Freyberg, yes, uh, who is Yarnesty on Instagram. And I was knitting the Voyager mystery cowl, but I pulled it out because it was the wrong yarn choice. Meh. I may carry on and do another thing because I ha we have until the 10th of December to run that uh, to carry on um, making anything that can be tied to Outlander anything at all anything relatively Scottish I mean they were in New York for a while you know anything anything at all that you knit or make while you're watching Outlander or while you're thinking about Outlander um, if you haven't watched it I would thoroughly recommend that you watch it it's super super enjoyable so let's talk about the prizes so I haven't talked about the prizes in a while which is really bad of me because they're beautiful Look at these beautiful Outlander bags by Longview Creations. So she sent a brown one and a blue, kind of a grey one. Longview Creations. And she is Let Me Create Today on Instagram. And I have all the prizes in this grey one. But I'm letting you, the winner, choose which one you want. The grey or the brown. And then I get the other one. I'm so glad I've put these away because I, I really wanted to, oh, they're so beautiful. So these, oh, the yarn that is coming with this prize is an amazing set from the Sixpence Moon. Oh my goodness. And this is the shawl set Castaway. She's got some stitch markers on there too. A little moon and sixpence. Oh, it's gorgeous. This is my favorite, obviously. I think I pulled this out and fiddled with it a little bit, but it's this gorgeous kind of blues and browns. It's a whole set. It's so, so, so stunning. So pretty. <gasps> so beautiful. Yeah. So you get that yarn and you also get a beautiful set of beaded stitch markers from um, my lovely friend Marianne Sheehan who's Marion Prince on Instagram. Um, she's an amazing illustrator if anyone wants to go and have a little look. And I also Fatima from Knit Knacker Wellness has offered um, I think it's two oils of your choice from her um, essential oil business uh, if you want to go over and have a look uh, it's knitknackerwellness.com her Instagram is knitknackerwellness and because Claire was a healer and then she turned into a doctor and Fatima's a doctor and uh, Fatima's using like traditional oils and medicines and um, to facilitate wellness and that's what Claire had to do when she was sent 200 years in the past very relevant. Thank you so much to everybody who's donated prizes for this cow because I'm having so much fun with it. So don't forget to pop over to the Ravelry group. The link will be in the doobly doob bloob doob bloobs. The doob bloobs. And enter your beautiful things because there is a chatter thread and there is a uh, an FO thread. I think I'm going to put this all together in the FO thread. Um, and I might throw a few prizes into the chatter thread as well. We'll see. I'm so excited! So, look at this lovely wide strap. That is so nice. I love that. Handy. Handy out. Great. So, I'm going to put that down now. And let's move on to the next section. 
Now the next section is my FOs, my finished objects. I have one sort of today. But first, let's talk about the jumper I'm wearing. Now, this is how I found out that I have an, a, a kind of a re kind of a bit of a sensitivity towards alpaca. So this is a beautiful uh, yarn called Savannah from Bendigo Woolen Mills. And I knit the Ginny cardigan, so you can see the lace on the back there. It's all owls. And it was from that book that did all those Harry Potter knits. Oh, I loved it. So you knit it from the bottom up. I knit it super long and I actually steeked this because I didn't like the idea of going back and forth, but I really wanted a cardigan. And I wish I didn't because I'm itching like nobody's business right now. Super itchy. But, um, do you like my leggings as well? Thanks, Shannon. Um, yeah, so I got these beautiful buttons up in a, uh, a little shop in the Blue Mountains in Sydney, I believe. So this is an Australian wool, Bendigo Woolen Mills wool, and it's so lovely. It fits so nicely. It's a little bit bunchy up here. I'm not sure what's going on. I think maybe if I close it, it's not too bad. But then if it's I close it, I get so su I'm super sensitive up here. So I'm putting up with this for you guys. But I haven't really worn it. I know that if I actually go to Iceland, I will wear this all the time. And if I wear something underneath it, like a long sleeve T-shirt, I wear this all the time. I would wear this all the time. I need to wear it all the time. That's what I need to do, really. But I've got buttons and it's buttoned all the way down we it's a little it's a little tight across the bottom i did increase but obviously not enough but it's absolutely lovely look at the fluffy it's fine i've probably put on a bit of weight since i did that <laughs> but the lace on the back is so pretty so let's talk about my finished object so this is my finished object it is using Manostel Uruguay in the Whales Road. Sorry, not Manostel Uruguay, Malabrigo Rios in the Whales Road. And oh, it's this absolutely stunning purpley blue. And I think I'm definitely going to rip out the top. So I need this hat. But I was freaking out on the bus and I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna have enough yarn. I'm running out, I'm running out, I'm running out. So I decreased way too fast. And it's all bobbly and horrible. So, I mean, it's a, it's a hat for my dad. It's huge. I did it, I doubled the rib, you see. So I was really worried. I cast on like 160 stitches or something. Super, super big. So, and then I doubled the rib, so I was freaking out that I wouldn't have enough yarn at the top. So, yeah, I'm gonna rip, I haven't cut the ends yet. So I'm going to rip back the top of it and just decrease a little slower. I might actually decrease more often, like, cause I had started decreasing every, in sixths, but I think I'm gonna decrease in twelves, you know, 12 sections and then like decrease one round, knit one round, decrease one round, knit one round, decrease one round, knit one round, decrease one round, knit, knit one round. And then when I get a bit closer, then I can start decreasing every round. I think that might work a little bit better, but it's just too bobbly and chunky now and I don't like it. So it's a finished object now, but it will be more properly finished later on. Now, now let's get on to whips and I can get out of this super itchy jumper. <laughs> Oh my God, this one is like silk in comparison. This jumper, oh. This jumper is knit out. It's the Drift Pattern by Kristen Finlay of Skein Yarn, Australia. Uh, Skein Designs or Skein. But anyway, Kristen Finlay on Instagram, or on Ravelry. And it is knit out of the amazing Fair Dinkum Dingo Dye Works Blue Gum. Uh, it is a four ply, fingering weight. And I absolutely, I got, it is pilling quite considerably. 
and I don't care because it's so soft. So this is a non-superwash, super fine merino. Oh my God, it's so nice. <laughs> I wear this, I actually stopped wearing it for a while because I was worried I would actually wear through it. I was wearing it so much, but I just need to make another one, obviously. The next time I would make it a little bit longer, just a little bit, just a few inches, uh, maybe make the ribbing a little bit longer. Hmm, I'm not sure. I might add a little bit of an eyelet detail at the bottom. I quite like that. But I do like the way, I do like the lengths of these sleeves. I really do. I, you know, you can do so much with it. They're always out of the way. I, I always, I'm always pushing up my sleeves to get stuff done. And the yarn is so beautiful that I would never want to stain it, you know, so I would not want the sleeves down, dangling and stuff, because I'm messy. So this sweater was a super fast, super fast knit. And I think I got... I only knitted in, I, need, I only needed two and a half skeins of, excuse me, two and a, two and a bit skeins of four ply fingering weight. And now I've got the hiccups. Now, my hiccups are gone. I'm fabulous again. They'll probably come back and sneak into my life. So, whips. This is Whip City in here at the moment. Whip City! Let's talk first about something amazing that I got, by the way. I got these keychains to tell me what's in my bags. So this is socks. This is a sweater. And it's got a little picture of a sweater. These are mittens and they've got a little picture of mittens and this is a hat and it's got a little picture of a hat I also have a shawl one but I don't have a shawl on the needles so now how great is that because I basically lose projects and lose yarn, lose needles because they're in bags and I don't know what's in them. So I got those from Knitting I Love Shop, um, who's Barbara on Instagram. She's got a YouTube podcast. We did a tag together in the previous podcast. It was super fun. So let's talk about what's in my sock bag. The bag is by Mina Makes, by the way, and I have got the wonderful Terry from my cottage number nine to um i want her to make me another bag just like this because i love this size this size is perfect for my little handbag and it's like soft and you can chuck it in and oh it's just perfect so this is some socks by strand designs and this ball is just not getting smaller i'm knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and i just feel like it's not getting any smaller it's amazing <laughs> 100 grams, self-striping yarn, strand designs, Karina, lovely. So, but it's like so long though. I don't understand how the, I don't understand this. It's like a magical ball of yarn. It just never gets small. So I am knitting um, cuff to cuff, ever, afterthought everything sucks for the Eva Long. So we cast it on on Halloween Eve um, as a group, as part of the Babbles, uh, Babbles VKNs group on Facebook. So if you want to join us, pop over there. You do have to answer some questions to, um, it's just uh, some disclaimers about, you know, how you, um, how you act on the VKN and you understand that sometimes there may be over 18s um, discussions there and um, we also uh, have a thing where you're um, you're responsible for your screen. So any noise that happens in your screen, say if there's like kids running around or if there's someone talking in the background that you mute your screen uh, or you, you might be muted by somebody else. So there might be someone who has the power to actually mute you because you're interrupting in the conversation. But anyway, normally that doesn't happen, but... Um, yeah, if you want to join the Facebook group, you do have to answer those questions and you do have to say, yes, I understand to those uh, two disclaimer questions. So otherwise, um, I can't, I can't, um, admit you onto the group. I'm afraid it's just, you know, we have to have some rules. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but 
onto the Facebook page anyway. So if you want to join the Facebook page, pop over there, answer the questions and join in our cat. You can also just cast on an Afterthought Everything Sock and just hashtag it Afterthought Everything Sock or Evil on Cal or uh, Babbles VKNs toe to toe, Babbles VKNs cuff to cuff. There's so many hashtags, too many hashtags. It's not really, it, like there's no actual prizes. It's very cash. You get a beautiful pair of socks out of them. But look how long this is. I'm like, I'm at like, you know, almost Virgin Mary stage, you know? I'm not quite Wimple. I feel like Wimple needs to come down here and cross over. No, that's like Peg Sayers. It's a bit Peg, I'm at Peg Sayers right now. If anyone doesn't know Peg Sayers, lucky you, you didn't have to deal with it. I actually didn't have to. If you're Irish in a certain age, you had to read all about Peg Sayers and how hard her life was. But we were, we were out of that stage by a couple of years by the time I got around to doing Irish. But she is a renowned Irish figure. She lived on an island and everyone died and all the fish died and cows died and her sons died and everything. Oh, so sad. But she always had a little thing like this and she was like, oh, my life is so hard. So, no, oh, channeling her for you. Isn't this gorgeous? I can't believe there's so much left in this bowl. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And I'm knitting on nine inch circulars. This is happening. Do you know what though? I am really appreciating the fact that I am still knitting two socks at a time. Right? Because... Nine inch circulars, I think I would only do after thought everything socks on them. Unless I had two nine inch circular needles. These are just knit pros, I believe. Just knit pro symphony not symphony, but knit pro novas maybe. Nine inch circulars. I've lost the package. I picked it up when I was in Tasmania. Um yeah, so they're amazing. 2.25 millimeter needles. They've they seem quite big. You know, these are gonna be kind of wide socks. I might um give them to my mom maybe they're a little bit big because I had to cast on quite a lot of stitches at the start because I couldn't get around the circumference and then once I was in a few rows then I could carry on I, and I actually decreased after the ribbing um, so these might even go up the calf but I'm gonna keep on knitting so I love these socks I love these socks so bloody much no so I've got a lot more jumpers and a lot more whips. So I'm going to change jumpers every time I show you a new whip. Lucky you. I haven't turned it off yet. Here comes featherweight, here comes featherweight, right down featherweight lane. Here comes featherweight, here comes featherweight, right down featherweight lane. Something like that. Ooh. Now, here is my featherweight. It is a beautiful ombre stripe version that I did. I knitted in the round, I did it from the top down, and then I, when I got to about here, I joined it in the middle, and I knit around and around and around in a big tube, and then I steaked it. Big believer, steaking, big believer of steaking cardigans. Yes, I am. And I knit this for Edinburgh Yarn Festival in 2017. 17. Why am I having trouble with the year so much? But I knit three quarter length sleeves, or actually they're probably just half sleeves. And I finished the button band on the plane. I was blocking it. Um, I steaked it actually, because I knit the button band before I steaked it. I steaked it at ACFA on the knit night, uh, just the day before, I think it was the Thursday night. And um, yeah, so I love this one. It's a super lightweight, lace weight fab. What yarn? What yarn was it now? I think it was Manus del Uruguay Marina Lace Singles Wasabi and Petrol. I'm good. I'm good. So I've just realized I've just given myself a lot of work to do in the show notes. Yeah. <sighs> show notes. Schmo notes. Next whip. What did I show you? Okay. Let's show you this beautiful bag. So this is from Cottage Number Nine, who is going to be opening her Etsy shop, and we may be doing a collaboration by the by, if anyone is interested. I love her stuff so much. Um, yeah, and oh, look at this tiny little wintry stitch marker too. So pretty. Look at all the Christmas jumpers. 
So I'm actually knitting, uh, knitting kind of like a spring summer lace cardigan. I don't know why, I just am. So this is the Vianne sweater by Andy Satterland. So it's a beautiful lacy and the back is all lace and oh it's lovely. And yeah, so I decided I wanted an Andy Satterland pattern with the yarn that I was going to do for the chuck. I desperately need to cast on the chuck as well. But uh, yeah, so this is what it looks like. <laughs> I had loads of needles on here, like cables, but then I, I had to take off so much needles off. I had to take, you know, I had to put loads of stuff onto waste yarn um, so that needles were getting all tangled and they were like pulling, the cables were pulling out and I lost loads of stitches. So I'm scared that I've messed up some sections. So yeah, I did take it off waste yarn at the end. So this is what it looks like. So I am currently knitting the left front. I have knit the right front and the back down as far as the armholes, I believe. So this is how Andy Saturn kind of works her patterns, in case you're curious. So that's the right front there. It's so pretty, look at that lace. So the yarn is Phileas Yarns in the Tamagrout colorway. However, this was the wrong color, which is why I bought it as a second in Edinburgh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So it's, but it's just, look at that lace. You're looking at the back of it now, but the wrong side. But um, yeah, so that's going to be the back of the lace. It's so pretty. It's like shining, sheeny. So I'm getting on with that, but I do have to concentrate super hard on it, which is grand. This little notions pad that comes with the bag. It's so pretty. Cottage number nine. Thank you so much, Terry. She gave it to me. She's just a fabulous person. I love her so much. We had a, we we had a little Instagram live on our knit night. It was just me and her in the end, and uh, we did a little Instagram live. But then my battery let went, so I didn't, I couldn't save it. So only the people who were there would have seen her. But she's so lovely. We're gonna do another one, I'm sure. Drag her into it. Whip number two. Yay! Remember this one. It's my water lily. This is my water lily from Pom Pom Spring 2014. Might be making that up, possibly 16. But it's so pretty. Isn't it gorgeous? And I wore it constantly over the summer. I do need sleeves at the moment. It is getting a bit chilly. But this is knit out of, oh, it's a bamboo weight. 6% bamboo, I think, 40% wool. Bamboo from Mars and Sons in the Lilas colorway, I think. Piper, 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 it's Piper. Piper's the colorway. Paddington, Paddington four ply. Boom. So this pattern is the Water Lily by Megan Fernandez. So pretty. Gosh, the lace looks super impressive, doesn't it? I'm so impressive. My next whip. So this is a special whip that's happening at the moment. Very special. I'm knitting the Selby mittens. Yes, I am. Finally. I first started saying I was going to knit the Selby mittens when I was going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I said, oh yeah, I'm going to knit them on the plane. What a fool. <laughs> I was still finishing my featherweight cardigan. So these are the Selby mittens by Ellie from Skein Deer Knits. And I've just... Oh yeah, I'm also using Dalton. Dalton four ply or DK weight in the roseberry and the sheep shade. So this is Dalton Border Leicesters again, which is part of the prize, which is kind of similar to the prize. So, and I have it in Mina made the same kind of bag as the sock bag, but it's color work. And that's the colors that I'm doing. It's this kind of dark pink. Um, And this is my mitten so far. Isn't it pretty? Yes, it is. It's beautiful. So these are this is the first Selby mitten that she released. It's not. It is actually part of the Selby mitten club. You get it as part of it, um, which is super generous of Ellie. I love this 
bottom section down here. It's so, so nice. But um, I love this. I love it. I love that I'm doing it so well as well. So I'm on the inside as well. I've just done this little bit. I did this bit, this part this morning, I believe, just before midnight, or as I, as we were on v, uh, Sunday morning VKN. So yeah, I just must remember to knit the other, because there's two charts, one for the right hand, one for the left hand. So I must remember to switch charts. <laughs> I remember because, um, who was it? Nessa from Kiltcraft Podcast, she knit two, like the right hand or something. So I keep on remembering, I'm like, oh, don't do that. So Nessa, thank you so much for making that mistake, because now hopefully I won't make that mistake. But you never know, I could overthink it and then go right back around and do it anyway. That's what I'm worried about. But look, they're so pretty. So pretty. And nine inch circulars. So on my vlog, I had started doing them on, on Magic Loop, but like, I don't know, it was like only 40 stitches across and it was like, it felt quite slow and I was pulling out stuff and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm getting anywhere on these. So then I decided, well, I had bought nine inch circulars at the Knitting and Stitching Show, which I'm gonna be talking about later. Um, and I, for sleeves, I had bought them for sleeves because I was feeling, oh my God, this would be great if I could just wipe through sleeves, just on nine inches, just go round and round and round, bring them to the cinema, you know? And, uh, yeah, so I pulled out one. I was like, oh, four millimeters. That's my gauge that I'm working on at the moment. That seems fine. And I tried one round and I was like, no, I hate it. Two handed color work. I hate it. I hate it. And then I give it another go and I haven't stopped. So obviously I don't hate it. I quite like it. It's great. And I've got a little, I've got a little, uh, um, one of my little stitch markers there. So cute. Oh, I am quite close to the um, hospital. So if you can hear ambulances, it's the hospital. It's better than the planes that used to come over me all the time in, in Sydney. So yeah, I really want to just sit and knit with these now. But no, I'm gonna put these down because, oh, they're so pretty. I'm so proud of myself. Like they're so quick as well, fabulous. So next segment, I'm gonna talk about my future hat and another change of wardrobe. Oh, this is a top. I can't wait for it to be summer again because it's super light and lovely and it's knit with vegan yarn which is netto, uh, I think it was netto cotton and linen and it's, oh, it's just lovely. It's so nice. It's like a dress. I wore it to the beach when I went on holidays to France. It's lovely. So, uh, if I was to do this again, actually, I think this was called the Summer on You pattern and the yarn was... I can't remember. I can't remember what the yarn was, but it was lovely. Just, I can't remember what the yarn was. Ah, and the pal, Pasquale. <gasps> Pasquale is the brand of yarn and Nepal is the base. And there was a couple of colours which were just numbers, but... It's just beautiful yarn, beautiful yarn. So let me tell you about the hat that I wanted to knit. So this is a hat for my mummy, for my mummy. And it's um, out of Townhouse Yarns in the Drury DK colorway, which is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. Hand dyed in Ireland by Jenny from This Is Knit in Dublin. Hi Jenny. And this is the Spiced Plum colorway. And good golly gosh, it is stunning. Stunning. I have an Instagram photo of when I just actually unfurled the skein and wrapped it around my head because it was so, so nice. Good, 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 good. So I'm on the lookout for some nice, D for a nice DK weight yarn hat. I'm sure I have one. I was looking at uh, Jenny from the Lone Larches podcast. I was looking at her, her, she has a couple of hat designs. So I might go over and have a little look there. I do love Jenny. 
and her pattern has been recommended to me by Laura on the BKN so I was like oh I might do that because that would be quite nice I think it's for my mummy she goes walking she does like 70 billion miles a day so and she wants to keep her ears warm in winter so I want to make her a nice bright hat so she'll be seen on the roads and she'll be safe and warm because I love my mummy and I want to keep her safe and warm so and I have my needles in here ready to rock and roll so yeah this bag was sent to me from a viewer I can't remember who now sorry. I'm so sorry but it's a beautiful little bag another really perfectly sized bag for like hats or socks I like small bags and big bags I like all bags what am I talking about but I think this size is perfect for a shawl project or a two skein project because like the two skeins of DK weight are just sitting in the bottom there perfectly. So cute. Now I'm getting a little cold so I'm actually going to put my so faded sweater which is the next sweater that I knit on over this one because I'm a little bit cold. <sighs> I haven't had lunch yet either. I must invest in lunch. AKA just cook something for myself. Ooh, also, okay, so another little segment. Let's talk about that. I've started to, I've um, film some little cooking um, segments. I have had loads of people contact me saying, oh, you must put like cooking segments in and you must show us how you make this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, oh yeah, I should. But I was talking to Barbara and she said, it's, it's actually, I think you should do separate videos because it's hard to go back and try and find where those cooking videos segments were so I only did one or two segments so um and then I stopped because it was a bit um well my life was all over the place but uh last Sunday I cooked a uh a curry which is like a s totally slapdash I didn't really have anything I just I, I showed you exactly how I make most of my meals which is I look around, see what I have and see what I can do with it. So I'm just going to be putting up a couple of videos under uh, the name My Messy Vegan Kitchen because my kitchen is super messy and I don't got time to clean up and look perfect and worry about perfection because life isn't perfect. When you're home after a long day and you want to eat something, you're starving and you're just like, oh my God, I just need food in me now. Like now I don't have time to go to the shop I don't have time to do this I don't have time to do that I'm going to show you um what I do in that case because people are quite interested because they say oh my god you're a vegan you have to be so prepared and I'm like yeah but also I kind of just throw stuff together and it turns out nice most of the time most of the time <laughs> so that will be up um by now definitely and uh, you can go over and have a little look if you're interested if you're not no problem so this is my so faded. It has been completed very recently. You can see the mistakes I made on making one left and making one right. So I didn't have a clue how to do that and then I figured it out. But it's on both sides, so it's like a design feature. Design feature. Uh, this is the beautiful so faded by Andrew Maori. And I have used the seed colorway in fingering, it's all fingering weight yarn. Seed colorway hedgehog fibers, Veritas Serum, Nora George yarns. Felix Phyllis's, yes, Felix Phyllis's in Nora George Yarns and Polly Juice Potion down the bottom. It's all fading in. Fade, 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 fade. Love it. So, what else have I got to talk about today? Oh, yes. So, I spoke about the Dalton Border Leicester. That's part of the giveaway. Yes, that's perfect. Oh, now I can talk to you about the knitting and stitching show so the knitting and stitching show took place in the rds in dublin um, last saturday and i was a volunteer i was a volunteer at the guild of weaver spinners and dyers and it was so much fun meeting everybody up there it was amazing and to be honest, if I do say so myself, we were the coolest guild. Like everyone was like, we were like the most hip and happening guild. So whatever, just saying. So, but it was, it was really, really lovely. 
it was so nice and everyone was really keen and I really want to weave now I want to borrow the weaving I want to rent a V I might just buy it oh no another rabbit hole um but actually there was something going on today but it was my only day off there was something going on today in Dublin um, where everyone gets together in the constant knitter on Francis Street and um, I think they do it once a month or so um, just to chat about it and bring their spinning wheels and little weaving looms transportable weaving looms and um, I wish I lived closer to Dublin or I wish there was something here we should just do one here that's it that's it I should just set one up here in Limerick done west of Ireland it's done <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, let's talk about a little bit about what I, so it was quite a commercial show. Um, there was a lot of, a, a, a lot of quilting stuff, like a huge amount of fabrics. And I don't really know anything about fabric. So I kind of wish washed past those. Um, I went up with a big group of people from my knitting group and also from uh, work because there's a big um, quilting contingent there. So I um, really enjoyed the bus up. I was working on my socks. I finished that purple hat, but I'm going to rip it back. But anyway, and um, yeah, so I was working on that. Um, I just had an amazing idea for a shawl using my yarn and River Knits yarn. Concentrate, Grace. You're talking about the knitting stitching show. So, I there was um, two booths which had really lovely quality yarns, which I um, I didn't. There was Winnie's, which was stocking um, drops fable, and it was also stocking hand dyed yarn by Green Elephant Yarns, um, and um, I didn't get anything there. I think I got some needles maybe. Yeah, I got I got some needles from another another stockist because I was looking for the nine inches. But I think Winnie's had the crazy trio needles. I was looking at those but um I'm not sold on them yet. I'm not mm, eh, no. They're too much like um they're too much like a DPN for me to be interested, I think. Not that I've tried DPNs yet. But give that another go later on um so but there was also apple oak fiber works there oh my gosh i have been stalking apple oak and they used to be called something else but they're apple oak now and yeah apple oak fiber works is uh etsy.com is their um what's it called is there website they're on Etsy Apple Oak Fiberworks and they um she works up in County Clare and she botanically dyes everything she she botanically dyes but she also acid dyes but she does a lot of botanical work and she she dyes fiber and oh my gosh her stuff is just gorgeous so what i had a look at so this is her stockholm base and I bought these colors. These colors are all botanically dyed. And actually, I'm not sure if you can call this botanically dyed. She doesn't tell you exactly how it is dyed, but I believe she used cochineal, which is actually a beetle. Um, but I suppose it's just naturally dyed. Um, using natural substances rather than acid dyes and I just couldn't leave it oh this color this color is just so intense and beautiful so I'm gonna do some color work hats for presents for Christmas and I really should cast them on right now because they're for people that I'm going to go to and see soon so so um I'm going to do two hats main color this one main color that one and then the color work is going to be in the white so the color is Witchfire, Ivory, and Riding Hood. How perfect. Oh, I love these so much. They're so beautiful. And that's her label, Apple Oak. Oh, so pretty. Um, while I was there in the Apple Oak Fiberworks booth, I, I, I ran into um, LB Hand Knits, 
who is an amazing Irish designer. Uh, she she designs in Ireland. Um, I don't know if she I don't she she's not technically Irish. I don't think she's Irish, but she lives in Ireland and she works in Ireland, so it's Irish enough for me. And this is a pattern that was designed for Apolog Fiberworks, and. I am in love with this scoop neck. I want to cast it on right now. It's called Ada by LB Hand Knits. And it's beautifully printed. Absolutely beautifully printed. I'm just I'm just in love with this. Uh, I don't want to give away the pattern now, but Can you see it? It's so pretty. So pretty beautiful. Oh I love those sleeves as well. They're kind of contiguous sleeves, I think. She has a number of absolutely gorgeous um, sock patterns, mitten patterns. She's got mitten patterns for that Stockholm yarn as well, actually. So if all goes to all, I'll just whip up those really quickly. And um, yeah, I think that's a free pattern, actually, the mitten pattern she has for super bulky yarns. Yeah, LB Hand Knits is her name anyway, but she's so lovely. She actually, she actually like tapped me on the back and go, sorry, are you who I think you are? And I was like, I might be. My name is Grace. I, you know, hi. She's like, yes, I definitely know who you are. I was like, oh my God. And I had loads of people come up to me and go, oh my God, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, I'm Grace. How are you? And they go, I know who you are. And I'm like, all right, with the face, with the podcast. So blah. Oh my God. Yes. Oh, awkward. <laughs> how do you greet people like that? I don't know how you do that. Because in Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I think I was probably greeted by two people. And they came up to me and went, I watch your podcast. That was like the first thing they said. I was like, oh, great. Thank you so much. What's your name? Where are you from? Blah. But um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I was just like, I, I was like not, not expecting to be um, recognized because it's such a, it's a more commercial show. It's not really like a super indie dyed kind of fiber podcasty sort of a show. So it was so lovely to meet everyone who came up and said hello. So I want to say hello to everybody. So awesome. So I spent some time in the Apple Oak Fiberworks booth and then I was due to head over to the spinning guild because I was demonstrating spinning from one until three. However, however, I forgot to bring anything to spin. And Liz was there and she brought an entire bag of stuff and I was like, oh crap. So I had to run around really quickly and try and find some fiber. And Apple Oak Arch had some beautiful fiber there, but I didn't see it until someone else showed it to me and they bought the last of it and I was like damn you Woo! so I'll have to go on Etsy and buy some because it's stunning stuff she has this Raimi blend I don't know if it's she has a Raimi blend on her fiber Raimi is nettle fiber I really have to stop buying stuff though she says ha <laughs> now so I did find some fiber. Oh no. And can I remember the name of the shop? Nope. Oh, oh. Oh, can I? Oh my God, this is terrible. Oh, oh, what's the name of the shop? I can't remember. Anyway, I think it's an English shop. But it was mainly for felting, um, this place, I believe. She did a lot of like flat felting for, she did a lot of like little motifs and little kind of abstract designs, felted designs, but she had this stunning stuff. And I think actually it's from John Arbin's mill. Someone told me that he was like, I, I know I have that exact color and I bought it on job John Arbin online. So I bought two of these pretty things super nice commercially prepared top um and i sat there for two hours and i spun this single and then i whipped it off on a nudie noddy so i was going to apply it back on itself and then i was like no i'm gonna i'm gonna spin the other one and apply them together and it came up so pretty so they're marling already because the fiber is um the colors are kind of all strung along this together so don't think a, um, a rubber band is the right way to manage fiber, but anyway, 
whatever. I don't know what's going on here. Bum. So, so the fiber is kind of strung along. So when you're, so I was just spinning it straight off. Um, so I hadn't stripped it down or anything like that. Um, so it will barber pull on the on the on the single, and then um, yeah. So it'll barber pull on the single. But sure, that's fine. So I think these are fifty grams each, and I got them for I got three for 12 euros or something. So that was really good. So I went, I actually bought two first and then I went back and I got the last one because I just love the color. And then I saw these colors as well, this kind of blue, gray, black situation happening here. And I bought three of those. So like the more 50 gram bumps you bought, like the cheaper it was. So I was like, um, all of it, all of it, please. So. I'm buying a lot of fibre recently, which I love because I love fibre. <sighs> so I have started spinning a little bit of the the, the the strip that I stripped down last week on the podcast. Might, might have been the week before, I can't remember. I think it was the week before because I went to the Knitting and Stitching show. But then did I film on the Sunday? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so... I went there and I was spinning there for a while, uh, for two hours, and it was lovely. I got so much done. I saw um, one of the girls there was spinning some art yarn, which, wow, her stuff is gorgeous. I totally burped and burped in awe. <laughs> yeah, so she was also running, I, I can't remember exactly her Instagram name right now, but I will put it on the screen. But she was also running the Dublin Knit Collective, um, which was a whole booth where people could just sit down and knit or crochet or whatever they wanted to do. And I met this lovely girl there and she was like, how do I join? I was like, join knitting? You just you, you just knit. Do you want to sit down and knit right now? <laughs> she was like, no. And and then I turned around and I asked, you know, where are you based? Because I'm based like down in Limerick and then a couple of other people were based in Dublin. She was based in Dublin. So they gave her a couple of like kids knitting groups and that was so nice. It was just lovely, really, really lovely. So um, yeah, I had a great time. I wish I had spent more time going around the different quilting art exhibitions. I had, I had a quick whip through and they were just amazing stuff. Quilting is something I have not got into yet. And I think I would like to get into it, but only if I was using up scraps from making clothes. I would think I would prefer to make clothes first and then use up the scraps from making clothes and put them into quilts. You know? So, yeah. That's my idea. I mean, obviously, if I get into it, I will like build up a massive stash of fabric that I just want to put into everything. So, you know, who, I don't have a clue what I'm talking about until I start doing it, right? Perfect, great. So what else did I get? I got some, oh yeah, I got these four inch or nine inch circulars. I got some uh, four millimeter, 4.5 millimeter needles and four millimeter needles. Uh, I was going to get five millimeter needles, but most of the jumpers, I, I can always buy them later, but yeah. So I started, I decided just to get these few, just to kind of keep going with the sleeves for, for sleeves. So yes, I came home then and I saw online something and I wasn't stopped. I wasn't finished spending. So I went on to, uh, Mrs. You Makes. I saw her on Instagram and I bought these beautiful stitch markers. She's also got patterns available. So Mrs. You makes, <laughs> it's this, oh, I'll just show you this one first. It's a little cup with a little spoon on it. And it's like a mug, do you know? Like a solid mug. I'm like, I agree with mugs. And this tiny little spoon for stirring your tea. Stir, stir, stir. Oh, it's so cute. And it's got this little flowery pattern on it. Oh, it's adorable. And it's quite long, so it hangs quite nicely. Oh, it's so lovely. So that's Mrs. You Makes. And she is um, on Instagram as Mrs. You Makes. 
and she's got a Ravelry group. She's got a podcast too, Mrs. You Makes, and an Etsy store, Mrs. You Makes. She's Mrs. You Makes everywhere. So, yes. Oh, and I also just, she does these um, like precious stones stitch markers as well. Oh, this one is so, this one is my spirit color. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, but it has this beautiful like little splotch of like um, imperfection there. And I, oh. I love it and the feel of it. It's just lovely to touch. Wonderful. I think this is Agate, I believe. I think that's the one I bought. It's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, I think it's some iron in there or something that has kind of made it bleed and do some stuff. So I was delighted to get those. They came over super quick as well from the UK. She's based in the UK. Stitch marker love. And she also sent some nice tea, which I haven't had yet, but it sounds delicious. Vanilla chai, caffeine free. <gasps> Lift flush with cinnamon and warmth. How Christmassy. Vanilla chai, yum. Yummy, yum, yum, yum. Oh, I also, I've decided to clean out this section. This, this, this is going to be my podcast. <laughs> sounds bad but everything I want to talk about in the podcast is going to stay in here which is much more much better to organize so <clears throat> when I went over to Barbara's to film the podcast she gave me this beautiful bag and I probably spoke about it before but she packaged it so beautifully and it's a pin bag it's like a perfect size and on both sides is a different color so you can put pins on this side and this is like a pretty pattern side and I have loads of pins Oh, which I haven't used yet and this beautiful fabric said it reminded her of um, the pillowcase that she that her mum made her when she was in um, primary school or kind of you know when you'd have you're still young enough to need a nap in school so all the mums would be making little pillows for pillowcases for their child to have a little sleep on so she said it reminded her of that and it totally does because mum gave me a ton of um, bedding the other day and it was just like all this sort of flowery cutesy pootsy colorways so it's just a really sweet little bag thank you so much barbara love it i need to put something in it now put a little project in maybe a little shawl because i have your shawl thing here a small little shawl Ooh, look matches the color too Ooh, that might have to happen what can i cast on i want to cast this back on again so badly Ooh, you're in a lunch so this is the hitchhiker, or, oh, yes. Right, hitchhiker, going in right now. Hitchhiker is in, done. This is gonna be the hitchhiker. I've decided, I, that's what I was talking about the whole time anyway. Why did I ever not do the hitchhiker? Do the hitchhiker, Grace. Do the hitch, do the hitch, do the hitch, huh, Kerr. And then I could like maybe do, at the ends, I could like extend it and put the gray things. Mm. Hitchhiker in the bag. Barbara's bag. So I have one more sweater, but nothing else to really talk about. But I'm gonna put the sweater on anyway, because I've got to finish this out, don't I? I'll think of something. What can I talk about? Blah, 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 blah. Think among, talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. This is my fabulous Beauty and the Beast Whip It From The Top Down sweater designed by me, knit by me, finished by me about a couple of weeks ago. And I love it. It's uh, knit, the body is knit out of uh, Briar Patch yarns in the Toko Station um, yarn in the Bay of Islands colorway, which is like a greeny, uh, greeny blue it's so lovely and the top part was knit in Morrison's estate five eight ply eight ply eight ply it's a DK DK weight jumper so warm so cuddly I want to go to Iceland that that's kind of yeah I want to go to Iceland but I'm going to Paris soon so that's exciting really exciting 
so I'm trying not to buy any more things because I know I'm going to be going to La Bienna May and her new shop it's so beautiful and now she actually has a sign outside so that's exciting so I'll be able to find her a bit easier <laughs> But she, it just looks amazing. She's making it into a super cozy space. I think I'm just going to spend one whole day there. I'll be like, James, go do your thing. I'm going to sit here and just be with people who get it. Oh, I love James. He's so good. Speaking of James, I'm going to show you something very important that has happened in our lives. Um, it may make or break us. I'll let you decide. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. I have started my sec second ro second row. Yeah. Well, my sure. second row. Just about to start. I'm knitting Grace's tulip colour into a swatch. Uh, Grace finds it the most relaxing thing in the world. To be honest, I just feel this rage just boiling in my chest <laughs> about how hard this is why why won't they just do what they're told why won't the stitches just <laughs> why won't they <laughs> I'm making it plainly obvious what I want them to do they're not doing it they jump around, they just hop off some of them disappear, some of them look funny anyway, I'll keep going let's see how far we get check it out so far I've gotten Grace had to fix several mistakes due to arrogance on my part, thinking I was going too fast when I'm good. Um, I have no idea what's happening on TV. I think that guy did it. Oh no, no he didn't. No. How does Grace watch TV at the same time? I have no idea. Oh, well, she did it. No, wasn't her either. Well, why did he do it then? Money. No. no. I don't know. I bet it's that guy. He's wearing a fedora. Blatantly wearing that guy. Never trust him at no. Well, who did it then? I completely missed the sort of the the, the plot of this. Ah, oh, that guy. Uh, okay, I was right first time. Yeah, thought so. Great, like Grace manages to watch podcasts, listens to stuff. I don't know. Did he do it? I think he did. He's in handcuffs. Plainly him. Still should have arrested the fedora guy. Anyway, one would. Yeah. Okay? I just need to run through some security That's me for today. Right. My eyes hurt. My fingers hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Brain hurts. I, just, I don't know how you guys do it. There's a few um, holes in it, you can see. Glaring mistakes. Glaring mistakes, that's Grace. No, but they're, they're, they're... Oh, look, there's Grace. They're, they're... I think they're unintentional increases and a bit of unintentional lace, so you're ahead oh, of yeah. yourself. Un right? Unintentional. Apparently, I, I accidentally laced it at one point. Oh. Um, so there we are. We will see next time, next episode, wherever I get. Um, I probably would have finished it hopefully by then, next week. Um, if he does it every night, that much every night. If I do that every night. I mean, look, it was daylight when I started. It's now night time. It's taken me about 12 hours to do this. That's not true. 26 hours of <laughs> non stop knitting for these. Obviously, Nick has affected his time. His, his perception of time yes there you are i i enjoyed my foray into knitting i which think continue with. which i will continue with purely for gracious watches and obviously the main point of this i think it looks quite nice i quite like the little pink and green in it i think it'll look very nice when it's all done up Thanks. and we shall see what the end product is so until next episode bye